In this video, we'll define the term transpiration and we'll explain why transpiration is a consequence of gaseous exchange. Now, the literal textbook definition of transpiration is on the board there. It's the loss of water by evaporation from the aerial parts of a plant. So, what do we mean by the aerial parts of a plant? Well, we mean the parts that are higher up. Um, so, obviously, not the roots. We're looking at the top part of the plant, and this usually consists of mainly the leaves. So, the leaves are the main site of transpiration and gaseous exchange in a plant. So this diagram shows the inside structure of a leaf, is a cross section, and we see that there are a number of different types of cells on the diagram. So let's first of all try and label and understand what these cells are, and we'll go on later on to talk about how this affects transpiration. So, the first cell, or type of cell, we find over here, make up the upper epidermis of the leaf. And remember, epi tends to mean on top of, and dermis tends to mean skin. So it's the upper skin surface of the leaf, which, um, if you touch a leaf, is usually quite waxy and quite smooth. And usually the shiny part is the top of the leaf. So that's basically what we call the upper epidermis. And on top of the upper epidermis is a waxy cuticle, which gives the leaf that waxy feel. And then underneath the upper epidermis, we find these larger cells here, which tend to extend down through the leaf. Um, and they're specialized because as light comes through the leaf, it needs to be absorbed by um, chloroplasts or chlorophylls and, and therefore chloroplasts. And that's used then for um, photosynthesis. And because they are kind of longer, so they're stretched out more, this means that light has a larger distance to go through them and therefore increases the chances of bumping into those chloroplasts. And these cells have quite a lot of chloroplasts, so I'll draw them in as green dots. And these are called the palisade mesophyll, or we can call them palisade cells. Now, approaching the bottom half of the leaf now, we then get these irregularly shaped um, interspersed cells with gaps between them. And these are actually called the spongy mesophyll cells. And these cells are specialised by being irregular in terms of size and shape, and therefore they don't tessellate or fit together perfectly. And this is important as it leaves air gaps between those cells. So there are air gaps running all the way through the cell, and that gives them that kind of spongy texture. So that's why they're called spongy mesophyll cells for the spongy mesophyll layer. Um, and underneath that, you then have the lower epidermis, which is here. And like the upper epidermis, this um, closes the bottom half of the leaf, but it doesn't have a large waxy cuticle. And therefore, the bottom half of the leaf usually feels a lot less smooth, uh, a lot less glossy. And along the lower epidermis, we find these pores or gaps here, or tiny holes. And these are called stoma. So the pores are called stoma. And the plural of stoma is stomata. Now what's not shown in the diagram is the actual xylem. But water um, moves from the xylem and passes to the mesophyll cells by osmosis. So of course you know that um, osmosis is where, where water um, goes from a low solute concentration, um, such as that in the xylem where it's mostly water, to a place with high solute concentration such as those in the cells, which has uh, water, but also other dissolved um, minerals and nutrients and so on. So, by osmosis, the water moves into these mesophyll cells. And then, the water actually evaporates from the surface of the mesophyll cells to fill the air gaps. And this is water vapour. So the water vapour starts to fill the air gaps between the mesophyll cells. Now, of course, um, as the water um, evaporates to form vapour, it spreads out throughout the leaf and disperses through the leaf, or diffuses, we should say, diffuses through the leaf. Um, and then we say that the water vapour potential starts to rise. So the water vapour potential is basically almost like the pressure being applied by that water vapour. Um, and there's a high 
water vapour potential here because we've got quite a small space with quite a lot of water vapour and there is a much lower um, water vapour potential outside the leaf. There is some water vapour in the air but not as much as in the leaf because obviously the leaf is producing and then moving water into the mesophyll and then eventually into the air spaces. So once the um, water vapour potential is higher inside the leaf than outside the leaf the water vapour tends to move out of the leaf by diffusion. And of course the easiest route for the water to move out the leaf is through the open stomata. Um, so transpiration involves three processes. So firstly, osmosis uh, happens to move the water from the xylem to the mesophyll cells. Secondly, there's evaporation from the surface of those mesophyll cells in the spongy mesophyll layer to the intercellular spaces. And then finally, we have diffusion of water vapour from the intercellular spaces out through the stomata. And remember we tend to use water, it um, moves from a high water vapour potential to a low water vapour potential. So it diffuses down a water vapour potential gradient. We don't use the term water concentration gradient because um, it's almost meaningless because if you have you know, a litre of water or 10 litres of water, the concentration of water is the same. Adding more water doesn't make the, the concentration of water change. Um, whereas if you have some salty water and you add more water, then the concentration of the solute, the dissolved salt, will change um, and lower. Now the transpiration stream is a term we use and it describes um, the way that as water evaporates from the leaves, more water is drawn up from other parts of the plant. So there's a leaf. Um, and of course we have water vapour diffusing from inside the leaf through the stomata to the outside. And therefore, once the uh, water moves, or water vapour moves from the inside of the leaf to the outside, the uh, water vapour potential inside the leaf lowers or decreases and therefore this increases the amount of diffusion, sorry, osmosis happening from the xylem to the mesophyll cells and therefore if water is coming from the xylem then it's drawing more water through the plant and as water is lost here in the leaf more water must be drawn up through the xylem from the roots to replace the lost water. So of course water starts to move up a water column from the roots through the stem, through the xylem in the stem and eventually into the leaf and that's a continuous process um, and the reason is because water molecules, H2O molecules we said before, um, tend to have tiny positive charges on the, on the hydrogen atoms and tiny negative charges on the oxygen atoms because the oxygen is more electronegative so it pulls electrons towards it and those tiny charges stick the water molecules together so they are kind of almost sticky not very strong bonds but enough to link them together temporarily and that's basically why if you go in the shower and your body's wet what, ha what happens is that water clings to your body um, even if you're standing up because of the, the water has an adhesive bond to your skin and the water has cohesive bonds to other water molecules. And that's also why, um, as I said before in another video, if I drink for a straw, at the top of the straw as the water goes into my mouth, um, water from the middle and the bottom of the straw gets pulled up to replace the lost water because the molecules are sticking together with those, those tiny bonds called hydrogen bonds. And of course that, that transpiration stream is good because it means water can continually be given to the leaves for photosynthesis. It allows water to allow cells to grow and elongate and swell up, essentially, so they don't um, shrivel and wilt. Um, the water keeps the cells turgid, so it prevents, again, the, the, the plant from wilting. Um, <clears throat> and, of course, the, the water c uh, carries minerals into the plant um, as well. And one more feature is that the, the evaporation actually helps to cool down the plant. So it's a mechanism of controlling the temperature of the plant 
because plants have enzymes and those enzymes need to have a stable temperature in order to function properly. So we have hopefully defined transpiration in detail now. So we should know that transpiration is a loss of water by evaporation from the aerial parts, uh, parts such as the leaf of a plant. We'll now look at the, uh, the transpiration being a consequence of gas exchange. So back to this diagram again. This diagram quite clearly shows um, gas exchange happening in the leaf. So we see that carbon dioxide is drawn in through the stomata, the open stomata, um, by diffusion, because of course um, carbon dioxide is used in photosynthesis. Now, as photosynthesis happens inside the leaf, the amount of CO2, let's change that, so the amount of CO2 inside the leaf decreases as um, the photosynthesis happens, and therefore the partial pressure of CO2 decreases. Or we could say the carbon dioxide concentration decreases as well. And of course, this then means that there's an increased concentration or partial pressure of carbon dioxide outside the leaf, and therefore um, the carbon dioxide tends to move from a high concentration to a low concentration via diffusion into the leaf. And conversely, because photosynthesis produces oxygen in large amounts in a leaf, uh, the oxygen builds up inside the cell, so there's a high concentration of oxygen, and of course there's a lower concentration of oxygen outside the cell, so the oxygen diffuses outside the cell, um, and that's gas exchange. But for gas exchange to happen, which it has to happen because um, that's how leaves can photosynthesize, for that to happen, the stomata must open up, and they usually open up during the daytime. So when there's a lot of light around during the daytime, the stomata open up, and therefore allow gas exchange to happen. But of course, if um, the stomata are open, then it's inevitable that water is lost as well, because water um, tends to evaporate from the mesophyll cells and form a high water vapor potential inside the air gaps, and therefore as soon as the stomata are open, this um, causes the water vapor potential um, to force water vapor out of the leaf by diffusion as the water vapor goes from a high water vapor potential to a low water vapor potential down a water vapor potential gradient. Now plants don't really want to lose huge amounts of water especially plants in arid regions we'll go into that in the next video but as a summary now there are a few things that plants have to prevent them from um, losing an excess amount of water and the first thing is that the stomata tend to close um, and they close at night time and they close which means that water is not lost during the night um, and that prevents overall water loss the next one is there's a waxy cuticle on the top of the upper epidermis and this waxy cuticle as you know oils and waxes don't tend to mix with water it prevents water from um, evaporating by after, after, after passing through the upper epidermis um, the next point is that you would usually find the stomata um, on the underside of the leaf away from sunlight as opposed to on the, over, on the upper side of the leaf um, which is in direct sunlight and that therefore prevents evaporation of water in larger amounts because it's not in direct sunlight and therefore it has less of a heating effect from the sun and of course um, deciduous plants are plants that tend to lose their leaves in winter um, when the ground is frozen and therefore if the ground's frozen there's less water available so they lose their leaves uh, in winter and the leaves drop to the floor because it prevents that continuous evaporation of water and therefore prevents that continuous transpiration um, and that's not a huge problem because in winter the temperatures are usually too cold for photosynthesis where these deciduous plants tend to grow so by now we should be able to explain that transpiration is a consequence of gas exchange because of course the stomata need to stay open to allow carbon dioxide to diffuse inside the cell and oxygen to diffuse outside the cell.